British science fiction from the uh, Mushroom Publishers of the 1950s. Hi, I'm Gary Lovisi, and this time we're going to take a look at the uh, science fiction books that the Mushroom Publishers put out. Um, by Mushroom Publishers, uh, if you saw the previous video, you all already know about them a little bit. But basically, after World War II, uh, when paper restrictions were, um, uh, were uh, lifted in, in the United Kingdom, in Britain, uh, publishers were able to get into the paperback market. Paper was, uh, was more available and uh, uh, traditional publishers and people who had never published anything before decided that they would uh, start a publishing company, sell some crime or science fiction books uh, in paperback and they make some money and they did this in the 40s and 50s. Uh, they were able to sell a lot of, uh, a lot of, a lot of uh, cool books and, uh, and, and did very well. So for a while, it was a burgeoning uh, field after uh, in the post-war. And uh, so they, that's why they were called the mushroom publishers, because they sprang up all over the place, like seemingly out of, uh, you know, like mushrooms out of thin air. Uh, different publishers uh, all over the place, and they're publishing all kinds of stuff. So we're going to take a look at some of the science fiction digests now that came out in the uh, late 40s and through the 50s, and um, a little bit about uh, some of the uh, artists and authors and uh, publishers. So without further ado, I'm going to, we're going to take a look at one of them, uh, The Red Insects by Vargo Stanton. That's a Skion book. Skion was one of the big uh, publishers of uh, science fiction and uh, gangster paperbacks. Vargo Stanton was almost always John Russell Fern. John Russell Fern was a uh, very popular, prolific uh, science fiction and a, a mystery crime writer, pulp writer. He wrote everything basically, and um, he was uh, a very uh, talented, uh, very versatile uh, author, who uh, was um, very respected by the publishers. They 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 want they signed him to deals uh, to work exclusively for them, and he had a deal to work exclusively for for um, for Skion Publishing for a while. So then Vargo Staten had his own science fiction magazine. Uh, in the back, they they list some of the other Vargo Staten books. Most of these were John Russell Fern, if not all of them. And the uh, the Red Insects is a, is one of the cool ones. I mean, it's just a giant uh, giant ant or whatever, you know, uh, with this guy uh, kind of uh, not knowing that uh, that he, that he's being stalked. They had they had really great cover art. Uh, some of the stories weren't so good. Uh, this next book is a, was from John Spencer, uh, Wonders of the Spaceways, number five, and it includes uh, Point in Time by John Toucan. It's Wonders of the Spaceways. Um, it's interesting because uh, the, the Spencer books were had great cover art, and a lot of them had these great science fiction spaceships and, and space battles, but the stories were pretty usually pretty bad. The Skion books of uh, Vargo Staten and some of the other authors were actually quite good. And some of these even I've, I've reprinted and have been re these have been reprinted over the years uh, and, uh, and the people enjoy them very much. So there's, there's different, different kinds of uh, uh, quality in, in these books. Um, you have uh, Kaner from 1950, Ordeal by Moonlight, H. Kaner. A kind of uh, kind of a mysterious uh, cult-like uh, crime, voodooish uh, uh, horror kind of uh, a novel. It's a thin, it's a thin little book, and this is the only one that had. Uh, you know, they don't. They usually don't have. Uh, any, anything other than advertising on the back covers. Usually they, they, these have uh, advertising. They don't talk about the next books or other things in the, in the series. Um, Zero Hour by Vargo Staten is another, is another uh, ski on book. Uh, this one has an American Price sticker on it, unfortunately. But uh, you can see the cover art is really nice. 
Uh, Ron Turner uh, was a British uh, artist who did a lot of the covers. I don't know if he did this one, but he did a lot of the covers on uh, on these books, on the Ski On books and others. Um, there's uh, Swan, um, Gerald, Gerald G. Swan in, of London, published a, a, a few books in the uh, in his uh, uh, different uh, series. Uh, he published, uh, there was three uh, weird and occult books. I have two of them here. Um, a recent issue of Paperback Parade um, has an article uh, on these on these books, and um, it's uh, an interesting series. Um, they list on the back cover. The weird and occult is number two. Um, this one here is, is number three in the series. And there was also uh, other Swan. Um, he did a uh, science fiction series. This is number three in the science fiction series with the giant spider. So these are really cool. Um, Gerald Swan uh, published these thin little books and they're, they're quite, uh, quite scarce today. Um, Another Vargo Staten book, Wanderer of the Spaceways. I think this is a Ron Turner cover. Um, I'm almost certain that it is. Um, another Vargo Staten, uh, super science fiction. Black Wings of Mars by Vargo Staten. Another Skion novel, Alien Universe by Volstad Gribdan. Grid, Gridban. Uh, Volstad Grib, Gridban. Another, you know, they had these, uh, where they got these names from. Uh, there was nobody named Volstad Gridban. Uh, he was, uh, sometimes he was John Russell Fern, sometimes he was E.C. Tubb, sometimes he was other authors that uh, wrote under this name. And same thing with Vargo Staten. Uh, the, supposedly they got Staten from uh, Staten Island. Uh, they just made up the names basically to try to make them sound uh, exciting or, or exotic or interesting or sometimes American, uh, although these weren't, you know. But um, interesting, interesting books. Uh, another Skion, another Vargo Staten. All of these again are from the 1950s, Black Bargain. Really nice cover art with the hand here, the universe and the ship surrounding the ship with the hand. Um, another ski on by Vector Magroon, Burning Void. Yeah. Vector, Vector Magroon, that's a name to conjure with. Uh, don't know who that was. Um, another ski on The Purple Wizard. And that's by Volstead Grid Band and another Volstead Grid Band, Frozen Limit, also a ski on book. So there you have uh, just a sampling of uh, some of the British uh, science fiction digest from the 1950s put out by the pub by the uh, Mushroom Publishers. Again, these were publishers that sprang up uh, kind of willy nilly after World War II, all over uh, Britain, and uh, to publish uh, whatever they could uh, sell to make money, because they were uh, really uh, uh, quite, uh, quite adept at uh, getting books published and, and, and getting them uh, distributed and, and sold. Uh, their thing was to, to, was to make as much money as possible in as quick a time as possible. Uh, there was a lot of uh, interesting uh, stories about about some of these publishers and again I talked I talked about the mushroom jungle before um, this is a history of the mushroom publishers um, and uh, it's by Steve Holland with a, uh, a a large assist by Philip Harbottle and the book uh, goes through all the gangster books but also through the uh, science fiction and just to show you a little bit 
uh, the science fiction books that were published and the crime books. There's some of the science fiction, some more. Curtis, uh, Curtis Warren books published them. Uh, Skion books published a lot of them. Um, there's just so many. These are the gangsters. There's some, there's some gangsters. They, ha they publish westerns. Uh, Mushroom publishers basically will publish anything. There's some science fiction uh, to uh, publish anything to make a sale. These are some of the uh, actual uh, Edgar Rice Burroughs Tarzan uh, um, inspired books that they uh, that they that were published. There was a lot of that uh, material and um, this color section and some of the science fiction. So just to give you an idea, this, The Mushroom Jungle came out in uh, 1993 and it's probably still available in uh, on eBay, ABE, different places. Uh, it is an excellent read uh, about these uh, authors, artists, and uh, publishing companies of that era in British publishing history. So um, I just wanted to clue you in on some of the science fiction from the Mushroom Publishers from the 1950s. I hope you enjoyed this look at, uh, uh, at some of these uh, book covers that uh, you may not have seen. They're kind of a... Uh, a lot of them are, are pretty scarce. Uh, some of them, there are some that are common, but uh, even the common ones you don't see that often. And uh, certainly not in, a, in beautiful mint condition. Uh, it's, it's a shame. I wish that, you know, that they were all like uh, in, in that kind of beautiful condition. But uh, unfortunately, when you're a collector of this material, you have to uh, kind of uh, take what you can get in the condition that you get it, because it's not often found um, in, in, in mint condition. Uh, the print runs on a lot of these books were, uh, you know, because it's, it's England, it's a smaller market than the American market, so the print runs were uh, a lot less. And uh, because um, people, were the, the books were selling like crazy in England, uh, people were reading them like crazy, they were read to death so that the, the gangster books are always in uh, usually fairly bad condition. Uh, and the, uh, the science fiction books are uh, usually quite worn, but you can still find sometimes some that are uh, really nice condition, but then you have to pay for them because uh, they, they take a premium price based on their condition. So um, with that, I just wanted to say, uh, just give you a look at these and I uh, hope you enjoyed it. And I uh, hope we're going to try and do some more of this from time to time. If you like what you see, give us a thumbs up and a like and tell your friends about the uh, this channel and the videos and uh, subscribe and thanks a lot for looking.